Do you ever wonder how they get those really cool textures on canvas? In this video, I will show you how to use gesso to apply really interesting textures and backgrounds on your canvas. First, you will need some gesso. I am going to be using this gesso here. Uh, if you aren't familiar or with gesso or if you are at all confused by it, please check out my gesso tutorial video. That will help you better understand some of the things I'm going to discuss in this video. There's different types of gesso. So you might want to learn about that and I just go over lots of things about gesso. There's clear, there's black, there's heavy, there's whatever. So for this video, um, this is the gesso I get online. It's a Canadian website but you can get gesso from any hobby store, art store. What you will also need is, I just have a variety of palette knives here. These are te uh, technically painting knives and these are palette knives. Palette knives are actually to mix the paint on the palette. Painting knives are to paint with, um, but many people call them the same thing. I just call them palette knives and use them for the same thing. The other thing you will want is a few things to texture. You can do some textures with just this. I'm gonna show you that. But you may want to use some other kinds of texture materials that will give you some interesting shapes and stuff. So I have just a few things. I always have a roll of drywall tape. So you can cut off some of this and I will show you how to use that in a second. Bubble wrap, I have some larger bubble wrap here. Um, you can see that they're quite large bubbles and a lot of them are deflated so I probably won't use that one but I have some regular size bubble wrap right here I these are actually ice uh, like baking materials that you would find for icing and stuff I bought them specifically for painting so I would say if you're going to use them for painting do not use them for baking keep them separate but I just wanted to show you that because if you're looking for different texture materials, here you go. Sometimes you gotta check in the aisles that are not for painting or for art. I also have these little stamp stools, uh, stamp stools, stamp wheels. This one has a little wood pattern on it. Uh, this one is interchangeable. I don't think you can get these anymore, but you can get the idea. This has a little star. You just take this out and put in a little zigzag wheel or a little uh, serge, that's not serge, I don't know, I don't know much about sewing so you know just leave me alone about that. Um, I also have these wood, uh, I don't know what they are, they're just wood shapes that I got from Michaels I believe and they can be used for shapes and I found this little dice and I thought this might be cool to just put some dots in. I will show you how to do that. And if you have some stamps, you can use wooden stamps, clear stamps, rubber stamps, whatever. The only thing is with the gesso, make sure you clean it off right away. Otherwise your stamp could be wrecked and you probably don't want that. I think that's all I have. If there's any more things to show you, they will come up in the video. So you will also need a canvas. This is a canvas board. Uh, sometimes I just use these for the videos. Framed canvas will work just fine. It really doesn't matter. Or you can use some paper. Just be aware that if you are using paper, there will be a couple of more steps involved. I do have a video that I'm putting out specifically on gesso and paper, so you can check that out. Count knives, you don't need to get a fancy, fancy schmancy one. You can just get a pack of these plastic ones. They're cheap, don't worry about it. And then when you decide, ooh, I really want to get into this, or you want to start painting, which I am going to be having some videos on that, and I do have some out right now, then you might want to get some more like this. Now that you have the materials gathered, let's get to work. So you can scoop this out, you can pour it out. Gesso is as messy as paint is. So if you are a clean and neat crafter, then gesso doesn't have to be anything other than that. If you are a messy painter like me, then you'll probably be messy with gesso. I'm just gonna scoop this out. No, nope, I'm not scooping it out, I'm pouring it out. And you know what, there's another little skin, but I'll show you how to deal with that. So I'm gonna start by just using this one. 
So you can see that skin there. I'm just going to take that out. Now, gesso is not a glue. Some people that aren't familiar with it might uh, assume it's a glue, just on looks. It does look very much like white glue, but it's not. And there is heavy gesso. I am using not a heavy gesso per se, which is, you know, a lot of times what you might want to use if you're wanting to make a lot of texture with it. But I'm actually going to show you how you don't necessarily need to buy heavy, heavy gesso. It does help. So this is, but this isn't super runny uh, gesso. This is a good, decent quality gesso. Um, but it's not considered heavy. Okay, so you can see I've got some texture even just doing that. Okay, we let that dry. And there we go. Now, do you want to do more than that? Yes, we do. So... What you can do, uh, let's just, we're just gonna, I don't, you know, we're just gonna fiddle around here. And you can see how that adds some. If your gesso is super wet, then you just have to be patient. It might, you know, kind of cloud over. For the most part, gesso isn't super runny. If your gesso is super runny, don't, don't do this with that. Use a thicker gesso. But I think that's gonna stay in there a little bit. And I'm just going to put some things at the side here. Ooh, I like that. And then this, you'd want to clean off right away. So in some ways, we're using this gesso as modeling paste. But it's not going to work quite as effectively as modeling paste, but it'll still do give us some texture. So I'm kind of using this as a stamp. And I'm just putting it in, and it it it's not going to, you're not going to get a perfect image. What you're going to get is texture. And you might get a little swirly here and there, and it's, but it's not going to be, you know, a perfectly formed image. Just because that's not, you know, use some modeling paste like that with that. And I'm going to uh, have lots of videos on that, so um, you can look for that. And I'm just going to smooth this over, right, this area right here. I'm gonna put that stamp there. So that looks actually really cool. That did look like a good image there. Um, hopefully you can see that. And there we go. So if you do end up getting gesso on your stamp that you really, and it gets hard, you can get it off. You just kind of have to pick at it and it's kind of annoying. But I mean, don't throw the stamp away or anything. It's just a pain. So I'm just going to make sure that I've covered all of this. And of course you can use a brush to get it on too, but since we're talking about texture, I'm just going to make sure, and I know I'm covering some of this up. This is not, you know, I'm not trying to do a painting here, I'm trying to do a video to show you what you can do. But you know, I might end up painting on this. So if I do end up painting on this, I'll let you know at the end of the video that you can Go and find that. Depends what this looks like. <laughs> See, but my my um my drywall stuff is still there. Oh, that's amazing, actually. I don't know if you can see that, but that looks like the best thing ever. See, there we go. But I didn't. I was too lazy to put this on the wheel, so that's why that happened. I'm just telling you so that you don't, you know, get mad at me. Some people get get really annoyed with me getting things on my hands in the video. Like they really just do not like it. They're really, I don't know. And I'm just like, well, what do you care? If you don't want to get stuff in your hands when you're doing it yourself, then don't get stuff in your hands. But what do you care if I do? I don't know. Like, I love this. I just don't want to do anything else. All right, so that gives you an idea of what it can look like. And I still have the drywall um, pattern in there. So I really like this combination here. I'm going to do this and I'm 
I am going to paint on it, I think, because I think this, this background will uh, be a really cool background. I think I'm just going to do some easy flowers on there, just a quick study. Sorry, I'm all over the place. I know some of you do not like that. And I, and I did plan out this video. I scripted it and everything. But as an artist, sometimes you just, things come to you, okay? I'm not a corporate business person running a corporate meeting right now. I am an artist doing some art. So things are going to come to me. I'm a creative person. I go in this direction. Then all of a sudden I go in this direction. And that's just the way it is. And so some of you people that really like things to be exact and specific and planned out might not, you know, get that all the time because I all of a sudden got some awesome idea I want to try. And you'll just kind of have to deal with it. I don't know what else to say. I'll try not to talk too fast. I will do that though because some people say that I talk too fast and that can if you can't understand what I'm saying then that's not okay so that is something I agree has to be changed and I will try to be you know I'll do my best but sometimes I'm just gonna go in all sorts of directions I really wanted to see if this dice thing would work out and it really doesn't do much so I'm kind of disappointed about that I mean it puts texture in there but you can't tell that it's a dice so screw that this has designs in it but it doesn't have like crazy texture. So I don't want to completely mess up my background. So just take your knife and just... Now, the other thing you can do is mix it with some color. And you can even mix the gel, the jello, <laughs> the gesso with the paint right on it. And I really like doing that because it just gives it a kind of more like not so blended not so perfect and now I've messed up my background but that's okay I can always put it back in I just want to show you different things so you can maybe see a few different colors there oh see look at how that like that just looks so cool when it's not perfectly blended and it's just kind of comes in and out and it's just a little bit streaky so that's good I'm gonna leave it alone because I could go forever here and I'm gonna come back and I'll show you more how this looks when it's dry. Okay, so you can see some of this texture. It's not going to be as much as if it was modeling paste. You can see that the argyle pattern and then the polka dots. Now, if you wanna try something, I am just gonna mention this. You can make your own heavy gesso that can be used as texture paste and I do have that is included in my DIY gesso video so you can check that out this is just regular gesso that I've made and this is like a gesso paste so it's just heavier gesso that I've made and that is on there so let's just I'm just going to paint a quick flower pattern just so that you can kind of see it I'll just probably fast forward through that and you can see it in fast motion.
I have painted on this textured canvas and I've added a lot more texture with paint. This will flatten out a little bit because it's not super heavy body paint, but it'll still get, uh, have a texture to it. Um, now this isn't a painting tutorial video, so I'm not going to tell you much about how I did the painting. Um, I will have tons of videos on I do and I'll have more on how to paint and specific painting techniques. Um, but maybe I'll just say a few things about it. I used the knife. I just wanted a really kind of wildflower look. I wasn't being too technical or specific, um, just more of an abstract. So I used the knife and did a few things with that. And then I just, honestly, I just painted circles with the brush. And in this type of painting, I like to mix in colors that it's like, oh dear, you got the yellow in that pink flower. Oh no. I kind of like that because it all kind of brings the painting together and it really helps it to blend because I didn't make my own colors, I just took whatever colors from the tube and I do often mix colors but I wasn't mixing it for this video just for convenience and whatever. And so with this kind of painting I like, I like to get some of the red in the yellow flower just because it all kind of makes it more cohesive. That's all I'm going to say about that. You got a little bit of a painting lesson, just a little tip. So there you go. There's a quick uh, painting on a textured canvas. And if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe to get more of my content. And check out my other videos on Gesso. I will see you in another video. Thanks.